In any case, if we shift into theology with a spatial mindset formed primarily by the I, thinking about freedom, well, problems quickly arise. Let's look at some of them. Let's begin with God and the world. I'm going through the headings on the handout here. Uh, just to, if, you, if you want to either fill in the space or if you want to make paper darts out of this, that's up to you or whatever. But these are just headings that I, that, I, uh, that I hope will help. God and the world, God's freedom and the world's freedom. If we think about God and the world along these lines, like two objects of a similar kind in visual space, clearly we're going to have dif difficulties. For we will tend to see God and the world as basically competitive, vying for the same space. God and the world can't be in the same space without pushing each other out, or else merging. On a visual model, it'll be very hard to conceive how an infinitely free God can be both outside and in the world's space, transcendent and imminent, to use the customary terminology. God's transcendence will tend to be seen in negative terms as God's detachment, his freedom from the world. The world's freedom also tends to be seen in negative terms. The world is free from God. By the second token, imminence, God's presence in the world, would seem to threaten the integrity of the world. It's a short step to saying the more active God is in the world, the less room the world will have to be itself, the less free it will be. In line with this, a very common way of picturing the God-world relation in modernity is something that, broadly speaking, we can call deism, a particularly English invention, I'm ashamed to say. In its strong form, the view is that God is akin to an absentee landlord. God started up the world, but is now not involved in it or with it, and like many landlords, not that keen on getting involved. Occasionally, it is said, God intervenes. But this language only perpetuates the idea of God essentially outside a self-sufficient world. And every now and then he violates it by breaking in and doing something, a bit like a burglar breaking into a world which doesn't really belong to him. And of course it suggests God is only active in some places but not others. Don't get me wrong, we want to say God is active in the world, but the language of intervention too easily plays into this deist scheme. And the other extreme, of course, is some kind of merger of God and the world, where creator and creature are to some degree identified. The problem with this is that both God and the world seem to lose their distinctiveness, and therefore their freedom. Orange theologies, I call them. Remember red and yellow, making orange. Orange theologies, very much in vogue at present. you find them on every airport bookstore. A picture held us captive. God and the world, God's freedom and the world's freedom think through sound, and no longer do we need to think of God's freedom and the world's freedom competing, f vying for the same limited space. Remember, the lower string doesn't drown the upper string or merge with it. It frees the upper string to be the string it was made to be. Those with ears, let them hear. <laughs> and we can hear that. On this model, you won't instantly think of God and the world in competition vying for the same bounded space. The Christian faith declares that God is committed to freeing the world to be the world God desires it to be. No longer need we think of God's transcendence as fundamentally about God being detached, free from the world, and occasionally intervening on imminent days, on good days. God is not so much free from the world as free for the world or freed, for the, freed from the world in order to be free for the world. God, who is other than the world, is passionately committed to the world, actively at work in the entirety of the, of the world, the space-time continuum, upholding the world and freeing it from all that holds it back. The lower string, we might say, is transcendent over the upper string, not in the sense of being disengaged, but in the sense of being other, distinct, yes, and as such, able to free the upper string. 